also thought that if somebody ate a large quantity of salty food before bedtime, such as like herrings, um, their future spouse would appear to them in their dream, offering them a drink of water. So it was believed as well that one long apple peel thrown over the shoulder to the ground could be examined to see if an initial of a, of a you know, a letter was shaped out of that. And you would kind of um, look at it and see, does that look like an L or an N or whatever? Um, and, you know, snails were employed in a similar way. So you'd get a snail from the garden and put it on the floor or in some ash. Uh, or flower and whatever they whatever shape they crawled around in or they slithered around in you'd look at it and see well what what letter of the alphabet does, does that look like and another one was if you threw a ball of wool out of your window and it hit the ground but didn't catch on anything you wouldn't actually ever marry And another ritual uh, was that pairs of small objects such as beans were named for a certain boy and girl and they were dropped into water. And if one sank, they wouldn't marry. If both floated, that signals an unhappy marriage. And if both sank, there would be a happy marriage. Um, similar customs involved hazelnuts or chestnuts named for couples and placed in the embers of the fire. And if the heat caused the nuts to jump apart, that indicated an unstable marriage. If one went on fire, it meant certain death, obviously. Um, and if the pair remained side by side and intact, it was a good prophecy for the union. But I hasten to add that um, all of these customs, uh, they were all regional dependent. So in some regions of Ireland, some of these customs were practiced, but in slightly different ways. And in other, in, in other, in other regions of Ireland, they probably weren't practiced at all. So it's, it's you know, there are regional variations to all of these customs and it's really important to mention that.